there. This is Dr. John Whitcomb talking about ceramides as the missing link connecting diet to diabetes and insulin resistance. Hmm. Ever heard of ceramides? May not have, but actually you started out the life cover to them. Vernix caseosa, that waxy stuff that newborns have on them that we wipe off, is a ceramide wax. It's a very waxy, rigid wax. You actually have it on your skin. It protects your skin and makes it a good barrier so things can't penetrate. So we have quite a bit of ceramide in our skin. It's an important part of some places in our bodies. It's useful as a certain function in certain places. The problem is, is what happens when we get too much of it? What happens when the ceramides get too much? And it's, it's a... It gets in your membranes. It turns out that this is where you can follow the line of fructose through to diabetes. We know that fructose has been shown to cause diabetic sy metabolic syndrome within just days. Uh, and if you watch the movie, uh, if you watch the movie, oh, Supersize Me, you'll notice that within a month he was so sick from liver disease he almost died because all that processed food and heavy fructose intake was making his liver catastrophically in trouble. But here's the sequence that follows. When we get ceramides, you get a problem of inflammatory cytokines and insulin resistance. That's step one. But the evidence now shows that hypertrophied adipose tissue, it, once they exceed their storage capacity, neutral lipids will overflow and begin to accumulate in non-adipose tissue. So once your fat cells are too full, then your muscles, your pancreas, your liver all fill up too. And you start getting chronic inflammation everywhere. And a little bit of over overweight results in a huge stress on your pancreas. Your Beta cells have to crank up to put out more insulin because you get insulin resistant. And the net effect is your beta cells start pooping out. And then it's as though we were given the ability to manufacture a million units of insulin in a lifetime. And if we only use two units of insulin a day, we can live many, many years. But if we're using 100 units a day, we're going to start becoming diabetic at age 50. And sure enough, that's what you see in America. We're overweight. Our average insulin level is above 10, maybe 12. I have personally witnessed the average insulin reported by labs as normal being, it used to be 2 to 18, and then 2.5 to 21, and then 3.1 to 29. You've, you'll see that in all the healthcare systems in America. As though that's the normal range. That's not the normal range. That's what we're seeing in the population. Healthy is an insulin below five. Oh dear. So it basically happening is that we're getting too much fructose, which makes ceramides, which makes our membranes waxy and stiff and rigid, which makes many of our organs function more slowly. And if you look at fatty liver, for example, Google for yourself, fatty liver electron microscope. What you, you should see a healthy liver with what's called the endoplasmic reticulum, all these membranes lined up nice and close to each other. With fatty liver, you see the membranes, but you see globules of fat between them. It's as though you went to the Ford Willow Run factory and put boulders on the process of making cars. They can't make cars, there's boulders in the way. Same effect. That's the conundrum. We like sugar. We like fructose. Fructose is a metabolic poison, and it wreaks its wrath through ceramides. And ceramides is the same wax you got born with, vernix caseosa. You want to get rid of that ceramide. We can actually just learning how to measure ceramides. But if you've got a tummy that's a little too big, you're in trouble. And it turns out that actually measuring ceramide is a more accurate measure of insulin resistance than measuring BMI and waist-to-hip ratio. If we can actually do that, 
that would be showing why metabolic trouble. That test isn't available quite yet. Stay tuned, it's coming. Dr. John Whitcomb for News and Nutrition. Please don't eat fructose.